Merry Christmas, Average Joes. Today, I want to go over something that is not book related, but it's still amazing and fantastic. I want to talk about my top 12 Christmas movies. So Merry Christmas, everyone. It is now officially Christmas season for pretty much everyone because after Thanksgiving, some people don't like to celebrate before, but you know what, whatever. Now it's all Christmas season. So now it's time to watch those Christmas movies. I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. And I have already been been watching a few Christmas movies. But it got me thinking that I wanted to do a dedicated my top 12 Christmas movies idea. And because I'm published this is on Friday, this is not a bookish material. I figured I'd have a little bit of a, a whiskey drink uh, while I go over this because it's for fun. So here is my amazing Christmas Grinch sweater. Lights up and everything. Hopefully these jingle bells, I'm going to try and not flail around some. I've noticed that when I talk sometimes, I'm very animated. My, my, I pantomime a lot. So we'll see how, how that goes with the jingle bells and if I make too much racket. And yes, this is the same sweater from The Grinch. What are, what are you talking about? No, okay. I can't do that. I can't. And we use it for our Christmas cards. So I, when I was planning this, I was writing down, okay, you know, top 10, that is a typical thing. Let's go with the top 10. And I started writing out Christmas movies and I think I wrote like 20 and I was just like, holy crap, how am I going to whittle it down to this? And then I was like, okay, well, I have to extend it out to at least 15. So as I went, I was like, you know, wait, actually 12 would make the most sense because, you know, 12 days of Christmas. So we're going to do the top 12 Christmas movies. I have a ton of honorable mentions that I will talk about after uh, my top 12. <clears throat> uh, the honorable mentions will, will come after the top 12. So in case they're all now on the list, those will be there. And I have some hot, possibly some hot takes on my Christmas movies because there's several really, really big named ones that aren't on my top 12 list. Christmas Vacation isn't on there. I hope my camera, I think that these lights are messing with my camera's autofocus because I look over every once in a while and it's trying to find me. So if I take my sweater off at some point, it might be because of the autofocus and because I'm wearing a sweater indoors and I get really hot anyway. Plus the jingle bells. I just really needed to wear this. It, I just needed to happen. So what makes a Christmas movie good? Well, that's going to be super subjective to you. And a lot of times it's going to be come back to memory. You know, th there's the classic Christmas movies. And then there's the ones that have really good memories, good uh, fond moments with you, with your growing up. They're going to resonate with you depending on what, when they came out. So there's going to be some of the older ones where you weren't alive yet or watching them yet. That might not work for you. Or if you're already in your teens or 20. And then there's some that might not work for you as well. That might be a little bit too past your generation, before, after. So it's going to be highly subjective, but these are ones that I do like to watch regularly during Christmas. And then there comes a point where I, I watch them every year during Christmas, at least once. So I guess I should just, I have so many honorable mentions, I, I should sprinkle some of these out. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw a few out there that almost made the end, the, the number 12 lit, uh, number 12 spot, because that comes first. So I, Gremlins is the first one because uh, I almost put that there. And I know Gremlins isn't a traditional Christmas music. It just takes place during Christmas. This is the original Gremlins one movie. Absolutely fantastic movie. Absolutely love it. Such a good movie. Uh, uh, pure 80s nostalgia. But it's mostly just about the Gremlins and it just takes place around Christmas. Um, there's a strong Christmas vibes to it, but it's, it's not as strong. So Gremlins almost made it for that one. Um, Christmas Chronicles, we just watched that one the other day when we were putting together our Lego Bre uh, gingerbread house. That one's, that one's pretty good, especially for a newer Christmas movie. It has its own unique twist on, on uh, Christmas and saving Christmas and Santa and stuff. And then one of the most recent ones as well, this is, this is, these were all in, in, in consideration for 12th, and I'll, I'll do the rest of the honorable mentions after the top one. Uh, the, the next one will be Last Christmas with Emily Clark. This one came out, I think, two years ago. It is really, really good. It, it's uh, much deeper, much more emotional, but it is, it is definitely, definitely worth a watch. I highly recommend that one. It's a Netflix movie. It's very, I guess, heartwarming, touching, uplifting at times. Sad. You'll probably, you know, a lot of people might cry during it, but it's still a really good uh, heartfelt Christmas movie. All right, now time for the top 12. So at number 12... This is going to be Jack Frost. 
Now, the Jack Frost that I'm talking about is the one with Michael Keaton, the one where, not really spoiler alert, Michael Keaton, he's a magician, and he dies in the beginning of the movie, and he comes back to life as a snowman. His, his son builds a snowman, puts his clothes on top of the snowman, and then by magic, the year after he dies, he comes back as the snowman, and then Michael Keaton is interacting with his son as a snowman, going through, he's helping him, he's, he's helping his son go through whatever the situation he's going through, and then fulfilling what it, fulfilling his own his own uh whatever he's trying to fulfill it has that it has a bit of a classic sarc um it has some of the classic dry michael keaton humor that's very good that's very enjoyable it has the snowman it's got the magic to it and then it also has the very heartfelt uh tear jerking moments especially toward the end of the, of the movie and i mean it starts off with him dying in general so it definitely has the emotion uh, in check with this movie it's not all just uplifting and fun uh this one will, will hit you on a couple of different levels funny sad touching all of those things and uh yeah very very snowy landscape number 11 this one is actually my wife's favorite movie uh christmas movie and we watch it most years just about every year and i've started to come to really like it too and that's the family stone this one might be a surprise to a lot of people for being a top Christmas movie, but I think I just had to put it on there because it's Liz's favorite and we watch it all the time. And now it's just become that sort of feel with Christmas. Plus, you know, uh, most of these, most of these uh, movies are going to be kid movies. Family Stone was very much an adult Christmas movie. It really shows how crazy families and getting together with your family can be and just how chaos and stressful and, ridiculous the holidays can be and you know there's humor there's lots of drama there's some twists there's definitely some uh some heartfelt tear-jerking moments so you have a lot of that so it's a very adult christmas movie but it has a lot of good stuff to it and it's just it's, i think i think there's just so much that so many can relate i bet you if if you're a part of a married couple i bet you one of you would could look at your the other person and go that's your family kind of situation so it's definitely one that I would recommend if you haven't checked out yet, especially for the you know adult audience out there. I'm sure everybody is here. I was wondering, I'm not drinking anything too fancy. It's it's just like kind of a mock old fashioned esh, uh, but it works. Number ten. This is kind of an example of uh, I'm gonna kind of have a little cheap combo one, but this one is just gonna be all the claymations because those claymation movies are like 20 minutes long or 30 minutes long, something like that. So like you got Rudolph, you got the the Miser Brother one. Um, all of those, th those. Sicker, I'm Mr. Ten Below. Ding, ding. Call me Snow Miser. Whatever I touch. Claymation movies. Those are just pure nostalgia, fun. Um, that that's that's just that's purely Christmas right there. The Miser Brothers are, are a very good one. Rudolph is always a classic. I mean, there's not really much to say about the claymation ones because they're just everybody knows what they are. They're always they're, they're on TV. They, you, you just buy the bundle of them. You can watch all of them in probably like 90 minutes or two hours. Number nine is going to go to the Polar Express. Now, the thing about this one is I remember when this first came out, I didn't watch it for the first like several years it came out. And I remember my brother really liked it. And I remember I, I saw parts of it and I was like, the animation I wasn't a huge fan of and just the premise of it, I, I didn't really... I didn't really get into it. I wasn't really like a huge into the Polar Express, but then after the years went by and it's like, okay, not, not, there's not always new great Christmas movies coming out. And then it would be on TV. It's like, okay, let's put this on. So because it was on TV so much, it got, it wore me down. And now it's, it is, it is a very good one. And one thing that's good about these is that it's so unique. There's so many Christmas movies out there that are going to be all the same type of saving Christmas type things, or like anything the Hallmark puts out is just going to be the same rom-com christmas movie basically just changing up the roles but the polar express is so unique and it's it's a very good and fun uh movie there's funny moments there's magical moments that's i think that's one of the main things that's very magical uh moments and the animation it, it, the animation is pretty good it, it's very different for for that for like a christmas type movie but it's still very good and then when they get to the north pole and see the big tree it's very it's very nice and i'm kind of surprised i put it at nine because it's not one that I'm always like, yes, I have to watch it, but it's, it ends up being watched every year. And it's one that you can still watch every year. Number eight is one that I could see rising. And I, it's just hard to looking at the, at the, the, the top seven, it's hard to get in crack into that. 
But number eight is this is going to be, I think this is almost starting the point where watching every year happens. This is a newer movie. And if you haven't seen it, you have to, have to, have to go watch it. I think it's only been out for two years. That's the animated Netflix movie, Klaus. So, so, so good. It is, it has a lot of awesome comedy. Very unique new way to tell the origin, the like Santa origin story is basically what it is. Um, there's plenty of funny moments. Norm MacDonald is one of the voices. There are lots of feels of like unity and there's still the heartwarming moments. Uh, not like super sad and emotional, but there's still, there's tense and uh, d- dramatic situations. There's, you know, some, some chases here and there, uh, but lots of humor. What happened? Not a word. You just sit there and be all magical and awesome. Lots of lots of good feels, magic. It's just it's definitely very Christmassy in this very snowy old town, uh, or a cold town. And yeah, it is a Christmas origin story. I if you have not checked checked out Klaus, then you one hundred percent need to because it is becoming a regular favorite. Um, I kind of I've put off watching it now. I think we're gonna wait until we travel back to the states uh, at some point to watch it, but. It's it's going to be watched every year, I think, because it is very very good. How are these jingle bells doing? Are they are they getting too loud? I don't know. Is they, are they as loud as my sweater? Okay, top seven. These are the one hundred percent watch every single year. I go out of my way to try and make sure I watch these. And number seven can be can fit. Like, I'm just going to take this story, I guess you could say, and that is the. That'd be the Christmas Carol story. So there's tons of different movies with the Christmas Carol story. There's the Jim Carrey animated one. There is the Bill Murray Scrooged. There's the more some of the more classic ones, a few, a few of those. But I prefer Muppet Christmas Carol. I love the Muppets. They bring their own level of humor. It, it the Muppets are are hilarious. Love the Swedish Chef. The, the animated Jim Carrey is very good as well. The Bill Murray Scrooge one is very good. All of those are very good. You know, classic Bill Murray. But the Muppet Christmas Carol is the one that I want to watch every year. Now, I'm not a huge fan of, of musicals, and I, and I know Christmas ones movies can kind of throw them in there, but Muppets have their own little musicals, but it, it, it they're good for this. Um, I just love Muppet Christmas Carol. Gonzo and Rizzo tell the story and their interactions and how they're doing things is, is always enjoyable. It never gets old. Hey, should we be worried about the kids in the audience? No, it's all right. This is culture. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, jelly bean? Uh, I had them in my pocket all along. What? Michael Caine plays Scrooge very, very well. Um, it's a nice short movie. It's quick. It's it's fairly quick. It's told very, very well. Um, it is it's classic. You have to watch one of the Christmas Carol movies in the Christmas season. And I prefer the Muppet Christmas Carol, but I try and fit in uh, the Jim Carrey one as well. All right, number six. This one could easily be higher, on, especially on some other people's lists. And I'm including both movies. Yes, both. And that is Home Alone one and two. You can't. I can't really. You can't really separate them. I don't think. As long as you watch one of them during Christmas season, it's fine. Sometimes I alternate. Sometimes I watch both. It. It just. It varies. I don't know which one I would prefer. I might say Home Alone two because something about being in New York and Christmas just resonates but also kevin's house and christmas has its own thing actually recently we just discovered on youtube there is a kevin's house ambiance playlist to read to it's got uh one hour of the soundtrack and like the 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 songs from home alone and there's a couple others from other movies sprinkled in great great to read to uh 100 recommend that i'll try and remember to link that down below if you want to read to it but uh we'll see if i remember so home alone i mean it's home alone Kevin McAllister defending his house, defending his cousin's house. It's so such a classic. The music is easily identifiable, very iconic. Uh, The house, very iconic. So many quotes and lines and moments in those movies that have shown up in other movies or that just resonate with you with Christmas. Um, The the, uh, fun fact, I guess, the black and white movie that he plays and stops and rewinds and uses the voice. That's not a real movie. They actually shot those scenes specifically to be used in Home Alone. So that, that's not an actual movie. They, they got actors to play that like old black and white type movie, shot those scenes and had it inserted into Home Alone to use instead of taking another movie 
you know, whether copyright wise or whatever, maybe it was cheaper, easier, maybe they just wanted specific dialogue. I don't know. But as you get older, you realize how many times uh, Marv and them just die, they would, would die. And, and I'm, I think there's a counter as well uh, out there for how many times they would, they would die or seriously be just done. It's fine. It's whatever. It's still part of the whole experience. And now I'm curious if you guys have a preference, whether Home Alone 1 or Home Alone 2. So now that I have the jingle bells, number five, jingle all the way. And I think this might be surprising to be above Home Alone. And I'm almost surprised now. I didn't I didn't double check my list. I made a list, did not check it twice. But jingle all the way is just so good. And it's, again, has its own unique twist to it. I love to put uh, jingle all the way clips or, or quotes and gifts. Um, I have actually specifically special ordered and bought the Turbo Man wrapping paper. And it's somewhere around here. I, I, I've used it in the past for like very special gifts, but I have specially found Turbo Man wrapping paper. It's out there. You can get it. So just go Googling. Uh, I think it's, I got it from eBay. It's not going to be like cheap, like other wrapping paper. It's very thick and very durable, but it's worth it for like a friend. For, uh, it's, a, it's like a very niche thing. If you get them that and just drive them crazy, it adds to the experience. <laughs> Yes, your Christmas spirit. Uh, I'm not even a parent yet. And that rush and stress of trying to get the perfect toy, um, I'm sure I, it, it could be easy to resonate with. That chaos and stress and mission to go and get that perfect gift, that perfect toy or thing for somebody while everything's crazy, all the malls are packed, sold out everywhere. I think most people, at least adult-wise, can resonate with. Uh, I'm sure people with kids can resonate with that even more. But then you just have, you have Arnold, you have a lot of other people uh, in this movie. Sinbad is fantastic in this. He really, he really brings out and makes this movie Sinbad as the postman. Uh, so many great lines and moments from him, his, his Sinbad humor. It's just, it's such a good, good uh, movie. Jingle all the way. Um, yeah. 100% a classic. It's, it's one that's a little bit harder to find on like the, the streaming services, I'm not even sure where I normally watch it at, but I somehow end up trying to watch it uh, somewhere. And I might have bought the DVD. Some of these I, I end up buying the DVD just because it's easier to find. Sweater's starting to get hot. I hope I haven't gotten blurry too much. I'm trying to look over to it, but I'm also trying not to look over too much. Number four is totally a classic, and that is The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. The first one specifically, the second one is still good. Uh, there's good parts about it. The third one is when it just, it really tanks uh, with Jack Frost. Um, I'm sure I, I could probably throw it in there just because it's a Christmas movie. And if you noticed, I, I haven't noticed this in a couple of years because I haven't had cable. There was a network that would play. I think it was ABC Family. They would play the first one and the third one, but they would never play the second one. We can never figure it out. And we believed that they didn't like that one because of the whole premise of the movie, the fact that he just had to go find somebody to to marry. And like it's send the wrong message or something. I don't know what, what that was about. It's still good. There's still great moments of that movie. And um, Tim Allen playing the toy Santa is very good. And it the, 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 the expanding of the North Pole is enjoyable in that movie. But it's all about the Santa Claus one. It's all about the first one when Tim Allen becomes the Santa Claus when he's fighting for Charlie. And Charlie's tr trying, he's trying to get Charlie to not admit that he's Santa. And they're both trying to fight that battle of is he santa is he not santa charlie you can't talk about this and you know uh some really familial heart heart wrenching parts in it but it still has that christmas magic the christmas sleigh yeah it is the santa claus i like tim allen and his humor so santa claus is uh 100 a good uh one to watch every christmas i always i think i always watch it's one of the first ones that i do watch all right, number three might be one of the most controversial ones, probably the most controversial one on this list, but it's got to be Die Hard. 100%, it's Die Hard. Number three Christmas movie. I watch it every year. I've purchased it on digital on Amazon just to make sure wherever I am, I can watch it. It's not, as the meme says, it's not Christmas until Hans Gruber falls from Nakatomi Towers. 100%. I have two, I have three uh, Christmas shirts from die hard and one of them is not the one under here i've shown i think i've shown all two or three of them 
on this channel, Die Hard, 100%. It happens on Christmas Eve. I still need to absolutely need to read the book. This is one of the few ones that I, on here that I can say that you can go read the book as well. And while there are family moments in this, and I guess, you know, my, my excuse to not put Gremlins on here is the, is would be the same with Die Hard because it just takes place during Christmas. It still feels like Christmas. They make some of the music with little jingle bells in it. Um, he has the ho, ho, ho reference. Now I have a machine gun. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. There's, there's Christmas references all over. And it's, it's just Christmas, man. I, even though I, mean, I don't care the fact that it came out in July in 1988. It still is Christmas. And it's still a top Christmas movie. So many people feel about it. And like I said in the very beginning of this movie, it's or the very beginning of this video, that Christmas movies are going to be completely subjective to you and your own memories and what you like and what you want to do. So this is a Christmas movie to me, 100%. If you don't want to watch Die Hard during Christmas, then that's that's on you. That's fine. But I do. And that's why it's number three, because it's 100% watched every single year. And it's probably a top five all time movie in general for me. Um, anyway, two left. So we're just getting hot. All right, number two, top two. Number two is Elf with Will Ferrell. Side note, there is a Movies That Made Us episode on Elf that was really cool to check out and how John Favreau made it happen. Apparently, this role, the writer of this movie originally wrote it with Chris Farley in mind, but then when they got Will Ferrell to do it, they, they changed it some to, to fit him. And it's, it, it's a really good watch, so I would recommend watching that as well. But Elf, yep, Will Ferrell. This is this is definitely a top top Christmas movie. Him, his like kid like spirit of playing Buddy the Elf is so awesome. And then New York again. New York is very Christmassy feels. It just embodies that Christmas spirit. A couple of years ago, we actually got uh, had a chance to go to New York during Christmas week to Christmas season, and it was awesome. We only had like four days there, but it was still really really great to walk around New York City and Central Park and uh, see the trees and all the decorations and stuff. Elf probably has one of the most quotable movies in this entire list in general. I use it all the time in things. I've put it a few clips in this in these videos uh, this season. I use the gifts all the time. There's so many things that you can pull from there. You know, call people cottonhead and any muggins. It happens. Santa! Oh my god! Still call out when a, a toilet is ginormous. You know, it's there's there's just so many great moments with this movie. Uh, you're an angry elf. It's very good. There's still you know the saving Christmas part is is nice and, and uh, Christmas spirit. You know, enhancing Christmas spirit and needing to boost that with everyone. But the family, the family ties in this, and like the the I guess the new lost or found family in this is is nice. And uh, there is a Christmas book. So like at the end of the movie that they make a Christmas book about Elf, that, that is actually a thing that exists that you can get as well. But Elf, so, so good. Number one, number one. What do you think it is? I think I gave away in the beginning that it's not a lot of people's favorites. Number one is The Grinch. 100% The Grinch. And while you can include all of them in here, I'm specifically talking about Jim Carrey Grinch. That is my all-time favorite. And I know some people are, it can be hit or miss. I know a lot of people love it, but the ones that don't love it just think it's just a Jim Carrey movie and his humor. But like, that's just The Grinch to me. Um, and while the the cartoon, the original cartoon short is only like 15 minutes or something, 15 or 20 minutes, he just, Jim Carrey just really pulled out a lot from that Grinch role. And he's just, the Grinch is a salty, lonely person. And you, if you lived alone in the top of a mountain in a cave, you would probably go a little cuckoo as well and talk to yourself and do goofy things like that Jim Carrey comedy. I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. How he goes into the town and the town itself that they made, the Whoville town is fantastic and very atmospheric i love that that dr seuss aesthetic uh the people in the town and um although they they had some side stuff it, it added into it there's still so many amazing moments and i have used the grinch uh either gifts or memes in so so many things i mean when when people were in lockdown there were so many awesome grinch moments that 
happened from the Grinch and applied to uh, being locked down. It's, it's a movie that never, never gets old. It's the very first one I always watch in the beginning of November. And I usually watch it a second time sometime in December uh, later on. There is a one thing that really frustrates me with this movie is that there is an extended version that I think only ABC family or somebody has the rights to, and they are the only ones that can play the extended version. And it has like 20 minute, more minutes of scenes in that movie, but you can only watch it when you're on that channel. You, I can't even find the DVD of it or to purchase it anywhere. It's really, really frustrating. And I really wish I could because the extended parts add, just add new things to it. I just add a little bit more to the Grinch story and the Grinch movie. I, th- I know my brother recorded it a long time ago on when, when it was on so that every year, anytime he wants, it's saved on his DVR and he just fast forwards through the commercials and when he puts it on and he can always watch the full version of the Grinch because we don't know where you can actually buy it at. So yes, Jim Carrey humor definitely appeals to me. I love it. I love, love a lot of his movies, but I think the Grinch, he really helped embody it. And he went through some ridiculous stuff in um, to make the Grinch. He had to go, he had to have like a Navy SEAL train him for wearing the suit. He had to go through a lot of extra, extra training and then some like mental help afterwards because the suit was just so overbearing and restricted to him. And he had to wear it for so long. He had to just really transform himself to wear that uh, crazy suit. But that's besides the point. Grinch, 100% all-time favorite, number one Christmas movie. It wasn't even a question. When I wrote out the numbers, I put Grinch at the top and then put everything else to the side to figure out where things would fall. Kennedy Mute here. Totally forgot to talk about the Benedict Cumberbatch new animated Grinch. And while that one is good, it's it, it, I do like it, and, do, and we do watch it most years just because it, it you know the Grinch story in general is like my favorite as well. It's not it doesn't measure up to the Jim Carrey Grinch to me. Um, I think I also think for some reason like it, it's so wasted. Why did they not just let Benedict Cumberbatch keep his British accent? I think that would have been so perfect for the Grinch to have a British accent. Might be, some people might have found it weird and out of place because the rest of the town doesn't. But like he's also green. So like, why couldn't he just like be completely different all around? Um, he's he's a much softer, nicer Grinch to me. Like you see the soft side of him right away, and I think it's it's way easier for him to his soft side to come out. But it's it still has some really really great moments, and like the animatedness uh, is very good. And um, Keenan as the mayor is funny, uh, so it is a very good uh, Christmas. And the, the different spin on Cindy Lou. And her mom was very good but i just don't think it measures up to the jim carrey grinch to me so that's just my thoughts on the better to come back one and why i wanted to address it all right i was getting sweaty it actually looks pretty good back there anyway so we're just gonna leave that there all right that was the top 12. now honorable mentions i already mentioned a few honorable mentions i have a lot like i wrote out a list of 20 movies that i could have put on the list that i, I just wanted to cover so Here's some other ones if you're looking for other suggestions because these are all very popular and uh, classics. The Christmas Prince is, uh, that's the first book or the first movie in a trilogy that's on, on uh, Netflix. The, this one is a, a rom-com, you know, a, um, a, another one of those classic Christmas rom-coms, but this one is really good. I really like it. It has the European atmospheric Christmas mountainy vibe. That's very good. Um, it's not like super sappy and like, ridiculous in like a hallmark sort of way it has its own it's, it has a great story um very 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 christmasy feels i love that castle in the mountains christmas feels and then if you like those there are two more books or two more movies i keep saying books two more movies afterwards there's christmas prince is like the christmas wedding and the christmas baby or something like that um because they just go along the main actress is from i zombie which is one of my our favorite movies or one of our favorite shows it's fantastic. So Christmas Prince is uh, very good. It's on Netflix. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. I, I remember watching this all the time as a kid. I watched a lot of theirs. And I remember um, the Donald, the, some with Donald Duck and then like the chipmunks doing something in Donald Duck's house. I haven't watched that in so long, but I remember I loved it so much. And it's probably because I haven't watched it in so long that it, it wasn't on my main list. But I think it, I, I do really want to go back and watch it. Uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. I know this would be on a lot of people's list. Very much classic. I didn't put it on there because, again, I haven't watched it in a while, but also it's 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 like 15 minutes or something. It's barely even a movie. It's just one of like these shorts. So it kind of like the claymation to where 
each movie is just really, really short. So I don't, I don't think it's very long, at least maybe it's like 30 or 40 minutes or something. I'm sure when you watch it on TV, it's an hour because of commercials and stuff. So I don't really know how long it actually is. Uh, the last one that I at least wrote down was Noel. And that is with Anna Kettering. I believe it came out two years ago as well. This is very good, two or three years ago. Very funny. That uh, Anna Kettering type um, comedy, she was an elf and her brother, or she's like the the daughter or sister of Santa. And then, and then her brother assumes the role of Santa for some reason, I forgot why, but he doesn't want it. And he's very, very bad at it, but she's very good at it. She actually can do all the, all the Santa stuff, but he can't. And so he runs away and he, he runs away and she, she goes and tries to find him in Arizona during Christmas. So it's like, it, it's very good, very cute, very funny. So Noel, one, uh, I would uh, recommend checking out it's on Netflix. All right. Now my Chris, not so great Christmas movies list. I'm not saying these aren't great movies. I'm just saying they didn't make, they didn't make my 12 and they didn't make my honorable mentions because I don't really care about these movies. I never, I never watch them. I don't go my way, my way to watch them. If they're on, I might put them on maybe. But a lot of more often than not, even if they're on, I'll do something else. And I mentioned and I whispered it earlier, Christmas Vacation. I'm not a fan of Christmas Vacation. I need the vacation movies. That sort of cringy, make a fool of yourself, be an idiot in so many situations just doesn't appeal to me. It just, I'm just not a fan of it. It uh, It's just awkward humor to me. And like I said, it's very cringy. So Christmas vacation is not for me and um, I'm sure I'll, I'll get, I'll get a lot of crap for that, but I don't care. That's fine. I, I don't really mind, you know, if you like it, that's great. It's a Christmas movie. G go ahead and enjoy it. It's Christmas time. So I'm just not, I it just never really one that resonated with me. There's, there's a couple of funny parts. Yeah. But it's just when people do things in movies and they just make the situation worse and worse. And um, like, I don't know. I just, I just can't, I just can't handle it. Uh, Christmas Story, that's not on there. It's a bit older. Um, it the, the kind of format, I think it's just been overplayed. I mean, literally every Christmas, there's a channel that, that plays it for 24 hours. So I don't think I've ever watched it from start to finish in one go. It's always just, you put it on and you watch a little bit of it and it's on and that's it. It's good. It's decent. There's there's some decent parts, but I just, I, it just never really one that, that hooked me into it. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street. I know there's a bunch of um, versions of that movie or a couple of versions of that movie. Not really, uh, wasn't really into it. And White Christmas. This one we actually watched last year. This is a classic, I think from the 60s or something. This, we never watched it. I know it was talked about. It, it was always on, uh, on top on lists. So we finally watched it last year and it underwhelmed. There was a lot less Christmas than anything. Like, there's these people in show business and then they go to Vermont to some ski resort and they just want to help their friends resort go off and put on a good show and hope for a white Christmas. And like, Oh, there's, um, it just happened to snow then. Uh, but, and they're just helping this, but their, their person's resort out, but there wasn't a whole lot of Christmassy feels to it. Like, I don't know why that one's so, so up there as a, as a, as a Christmas movie. Now I know like Bing Crosby, he has great Christmas songs. I listen to his Christmas songs all the time, but that doesn't make the movie itself good. I'll just listen to the music. Uh, so white Christmas kind of fell flat for me as well. So now I want to hear from you. What do you think of my list? What did you not like about my list? What are some ones that I missed that I didn't have on there that I should check out that uh, might be ones that you really like, or that I could have missed about? I know last year they, there was a new movie that came out, Jingle Jangle. That one fell flat, so don't bring that one up to me. And yeah, there's a few. Uh, n side note, there's one coming out this year that I'm really excited about, and that's called The 8-Bit Eight Eight Christmas or something like that with Neil Patrick Harris. Very 80s type feel when the Nintendo released and everybody was rushing, hustling, and bustling to get that new Nintendo game system. So I really want to. I really want to watch that one. I think it's going to be really good. It's going to be a Netflix movie if you have not heard of it or seen the previews for it yet. But that is my top twelve Christmas movies. Let me know your thoughts and let me know what you let me know what you like to watch Christmas movie wise and during the Christmas season. And let's chat more down in the comments. I'd like to talk a little bit more. And I hope everyone is having a fantastic holiday and Christmas season. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.